And it started off as a very rainy day. And we have a little bit of clearing. A little bit of clearing. Hey, this is Mark Shepard, Healing Pastures, and <laughs> I'm feeding the dogs. I have to feed them in the morning and feed them in the evening to give them their medication because they both got anaplasmosis and Luna got anaplasmosis and Lyme. And so that's a whole other story for another day, but I have a minute to just stand here because if I don't stand here... <laughs> The sheep will come in and try to take their food and then the dogs will have to school the sheep and it's just like i don't need the the trauma and the drama right now so the last couple of sunday messages were basically all about dealing with the unrelenting stress of starting a farm without my own land without much money <laughs> And just really trying to bootstrap it up pretty much on my own. And also taking care of my dad, who's 96 and who has had a number of different health issues. And he's handicapped to start to, to add to that. So that's been taking some time. And the reality is, and I said this to him this morning, like he's more important than this whole idea of farming, right? Because we can still go to the grocery store and buy our food if we had to, right? Farming is a choice at this point for us. And I apologize for the wind if it's too loud. I'm trying to stand so the mic is in the wind shadow here. So I've been, over the years, I've done a lot of different things. I've tried a lot of different things. I'm a kinesthetic learner. I can't just read about something I have to read about something and go, wow, I think I'd like to do that. And then I do it. And then there's a certain point, and I use this analogy of climbing a mountain. There's a certain point where it, you bust your butt just to get to the top of the mountain. And then you look around and go, okay, the view's nice up here. But now I have to get back down the mountain. Sometimes getting back down the mountain is harder in many ways than climbing the mountain. And I've just been feeling like that's what I've been doing and I still have a long way to go before I get back to the safety of, of the valley, right? And so I've been kind of racking my brains as to how to reduce my workload without hiring someone because I don't have the money to hire someone. And the reality is I just bought pig feed yesterday and I didn't have the money to buy it. And so I have 10 days to pay for it. So, you know, and to still get my discount, my, my volume discount. And it's like every two weeks, it's like 450 bucks to buy pig feed and the piglets are growing. So I made a decision and I, I have someone who I think will buy the piglets, the seven piglets, because uh, my friend Gary he has all kinds of vegetable waste, so he can feed them a lot cheaper than me, and he will not do it organically, and he literally has his own feed store, so he can buy feed wholesale, and so it's a much better deal for him than it is for me, and I could still probably buy, uh, you know, a half, a quarter, a whole hog from him, um, probably for less, then it would cost me to raise it myself. It's like, I love raspberries and I love being able to go out and pick them, but it's actually cheaper for me to go to the grocery store and buy raspberries, just strictly economically speaking, right? So the reality is I don't have to do everything. I can't do everything. And what's happened is I'm so busy from literally seven in the morning, sometimes earlier, till eight or nine at night and I'm you know I'm making all the meals I'm doing the grocery shopping I'm doing a lot of the dishes <laughs> I, I'm sort of keeping house not very well 
and I'm driving to two different farm locations, sometimes twice a day, that aren't far away. They're seven minutes, you know, 10 minutes away. Not bad, but it's still like constant in and out of the car, constant figuring out, okay, what am I doing? What do I have to take? And so I also had a conversation with some other friends of mine about possibly uh, selling my my big girl pigs. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. And when I follow through there and just, okay, I'm just going to focus on the sheep <laughs> and on the music. That to me and my dad. Those three things I could handle. Um, and uh, I think I'm definitely, my two cows haven't had calves so i think they're probably going to have to go to freezer camp um and i can i can buy exactly the kind of beef wholesale that i want because i now know three really good beef producers and you know Corey's my first choice because of the way he raises them but i have another two friends who i i would absolutely I trust the way they raise their animals, the way they treat their animals. So the lesson here on a practical starting a farm basis is, yeah, try a lot of different things and then decide which are your strengths, which are the things that, like, the sheep can eat grass and brush. It's free. The pigs, I got to buy the food for them, even though they, they also supplement with grass and brush it's just i can't do it all i cannot do it all and i think we have to be able to be unattached to our original idea if we need to adjust we need to adjust things down the road and i'm serious about starting a farm church and using my music and connecting with people who are in the local area who care about raising food, who are trying to homestead or trying to farm in a better way. And I want to support those people and I want to minister to them because I understand how hard it is. And for me, the spiritual component of this is if we only have one life to live and we want to live our best life, then it matters there's a certain point where you got to suck it up, put on your big boy or big girl pants and get to work. And I get that. But there's a difference between stress, temporary stress and unrelenting stress. And the unrelenting stress is like, for example, I'm holding this phone with my right hand. And there's a certain point, almost eight minutes into this Sunday message, there's a certain point where it's starting to hurt my shoulder. Like I have to, I have to, I can't do it that way. I gotta, how do I, how was I even doing it? I have to hold it with the other hand and give my shoulder a rest. Because if I don't, I could actually hurt my shoulder. The other example I've used in the past is, you know, at a cocktail party, someone can hand you a glass of wine or a glass of water or seltzer or whatever it is you drink. And you can hold it and you can have a conversation, hold it. But eventually, you got to put the glass down. Because even something so small as a glass becomes heavy if you don't have rest. And everything we're doing about farming is giving land rest and recovery time. And if we can give the land rest and recovery time, well, we kind of need it too. And I literally work seven days a week. The only day I get off is the one Saturday I'm down in Albany with my girlfriend, Ursula. And I'm usually not good for much. I'm usually like, I just got to lie on the couch because I'm exhausted. And what I want, what I want to model for people is the ability to follow your dream, but also don't be too rigid if as you approach your dream, you realize, ah, oh, I don't kind of want to do this. And for me, I know that most musicians have to tour constantly to make a living. And the idea of touring constantly, just, I couldn't 
Ugh. Don't want to do it. I want to sleep in my own bed every night. So that was a choice I made that kind of means my music is not getting out. But I have to find a different way to do it. I have to find a way of farming that works for me. And I may, you know, I may end up just collaborating with other farmers. I may end up doing things even differently next year than I'm doing it now. And the reality is that it is possible to start a farm without owning your own land. That is absolutely possible. It's possible to make a living raising pigs even, but you have to have some capital up front because you're, you're gonna have to put money out to feed the pigs. But with the sheep, particularly if you start in the spring, you don't have to put any money out for food because they eat grass, they eat weeds, they eat low-hanging trees, they eat pretty much everything. And, you know, you could even start a business. I've been thinking about starting a business with sheep where I just go to different people's land and, you know, eat their brush. And eventually that could be a model where people pay me to bring my sheep to their property and to, I would have a whole crew of young, strong people <laughs> and we would do natural landscaping. That's a, you know, there's all these ideas, but the reality is there's only 24 hours in the day and I sleep eight hours. I make sure that I sleep. And there's just a limit to what I can humanly do by myself. The other piece of the puzzle is my friend Josh got a job as an art teacher. So he's he's gone. I don't have him once a week or twice a week, which I, I had his help a couple times a week. Uh, I've been taking care of the sheep and Corey's been taking care of the cows. That's worked really well. And... You know, Corey is usually around, so when I leave one weekend a month, I've got him, and I can count on him. And Corey's mom, Ann, has been wonderful and very supportive and helped us with all kinds of stuff. And uh, she even offered to help me process my ducks because the male ducks are driving me nuts. They're, i got to get rid of the male ducks, too. I'm going to keep the girl ducks because I love duck eggs, but the male ducks have got to go. They're just beating up on the girls, something horrible. And I feel bad about that. And it's just, it's just too much. <sighs> Next bike. There's Luna. Hi, Luna. So if I focus on the sheep and the sheep dogs, it feels like I can manage that and all the other things that I do. I don't know, could be wrong. Maybe it's a mistake. But I can get, you know, if I have two other sources of really high quality natural pork, <coughs> doesn't maybe have to be organic. Um, so those are my thoughts. Anyway, the lesson for today, after this long monologue, this, the lesson is that we have to take care of ourselves as well, particularly if you're in a caretaker position, like my dad depends on me. And I need to not be so tired that I can't take care of him, or I need to not be so tired that I make some dumb mistake and hurt myself, right? And just the unrelenting stress has been getting to me. And, and I need to get back into the recording studio. I need to. I have to. That's not an option. Whatever work I do has to support recording all these songs because I have a lifetime of songs that I know could make a difference in somebody's life someday, if not now, sometime in the future. But they're not going to they're not going to get out into the future if I don't record them. And no one else can do that for me. I have to do that. Um and I'm forgetting a lot of them. And I need to get, I need to do that. That needs to be like my main, my main gig. So 
I don't know where you are in your life, but whatever you're doing, take some time to take stock and see if you can find a way to do it better, to get more done with less time and effort, to find help, to ask for help. One of my ideas about starting the farm church was that a group of us could do this and someone could cover a different weekend. You want to you want to get your feet wet in farming? Come and take care of the farm for a weekend. I'll still be around, but I just need some time off. I can answer questions, but maybe you want to come and work on the farm for a weekend, one weekend a month, and maybe you'd be willing to commit to that. And maybe you'd get some meat for doing that. I don't know, but those are some thoughts. And the thing is that we are spirits in bodies, and if our bodies are being dragged down, our spirits can't fly high and free. We need to integrate both. We need to take care of the body and we need to take care of our hearts, our souls, our spirits. And uh, the thing is these, these maremmas, like economically might not have been the best move, but spiritually, emotionally, you know, just, this is, this is, there's Luna, Luna. <laughs> this is so important to be able to have some time to just be, to be a human being, not a human doing. So I hope this week you'll take some time to be a human being instead of being a human doing <laughs> and to find find that just moment that still small voice that speaks to you because God doesn't want to punish us God wants us to thrive and if you see animals and you know like they spend a lot of time sleeping <laughs> they don't work that hard we're the only ones who seem to think that we have to work all the time. So anyway, there's a lot more to that, but let's send out some prayers. Send out prayers to people who attempt to do difficult things, people who are willing to try things, who are willing to roll up their sleeves and get to work, people who are willing to also go, you know what? Go for it, it's not for me. <laughs> and just, I wanna thank all of you who have supported this project and this channel and just i appreciate you so much please leave a comment below please give it a thumbs up please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and we'll see where all this goes we'll see what decisions i stick to and what i change and here's a song for you don't know what it is at the moment but you'll find out in just a minute and so will i peace love and grooviness over and out amen
say we found a way to have fun while we got the job done and I want to thank everyone who joined in and helped turn work into play hip hip hooray hip hip hooray I see the blue breaking through do you catch a glimpse of it too what's it like to be What? Come on. You ready? For, you ready for your medication? Hmm? You ready for your snack and your medication? Like I haven't had time to just sit with these dogs all week. It's Saturday, and yeah, I'm feeling kind of guilty because I'm just hanging out here when there's twelve other things I should be doing. But like, screw it. I need a little rest. Where's Luna? There's Luna. Hey, baby. Hey, Luna. Come on over. You want to cuddle? I have time to cuddle. <laughs> Spike's foot is on me. You have a big feet. You got the big feet, Spike. Oh, you got a fly on your nose. Yes, but look at his nose is way better because the, the deer flies are much less. Man, the deer flies were horrible this year. Yeah. Yeah. This is why we don't eat dogs, because dogs have a relationship with us. <laughs> it's pretty special. And dog spelled backwards is God, so there you go. What? Yeah. You ready for the next thing? You ready? Hmm? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I'm trying to turn the phone off. Let me turn the phone off. You won't let me not pet him. Luna, come. Every time I have had any kind of treats, I always, you know, have them stay and come and stay and come. And here's, here's Luna. This is the essence of Luna. Luna, baby, come. Luna, come. <sighs> She's going to come. Good girl. Come on, baby. Come on, honey. I'm going to give you a treat. You know I'm going to give you a treat. Come on, honey. Come on, Luna. She's like, I got to keep an eye on these sheep. Because you never know. Sheep. Sheep are sneaky. Come on, honey. 
Come on, Luna. It's almost a minute. Come on, baby. Luna, come. Come on, honey. Good girl. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. <laughs> she was something else. Come on, honey. Come on, I got I got pretty oh you know, that's as far as you're gonna come. That's it. That's it, huh? Alright, bring little spikers here. Alright, I got I got some treats. Here's a treat for Spike. Come on, Luna. You gotta come and get it. Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> Come on, honey. Come on. Come on, baby. Luna, come. <laughs> Luna. Don't make me walk over there. Come on. Yeah, come on. <laughs> oh, Luna. Come on, honey. Come on. He's got one. Oh, okay, I'll come. Good girl. That was 2 minutes and 21, 24 seconds. There you go. Good girl. Very good girl. Very, very good girl. Yes, very good girl. Where are you going to take it? What are you going to do with it, huh? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Huh? 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 Whoops. What do you think? Huh? You're going to go someplace where you can just chew on it by yourself? Maybe roll in some nice good sheep poop? <sighs> All right, three minutes just to give her a bone. Like, <laughs> there you go contrast between light and dark <laughs> right here it's probably gonna rain again maybe blue breaking through would be a good song <laughs>